at <laughs> so well um the 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 lesson is a, a very important lesson it speaks of christ will come again and um the, I, 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 I like the intro. It talks about how that, like in the 1950s and 60s, um, we we're always talking about, the, the Pentecostal church was always talking about the return of Jesus Christ. And that, you know, Jesus coming back. And that was kind of like a big focus, even when I went to, um, when I went to uh, Bible school. Um, there was, you know, people coming in and talking about the end times and how that, you know, Christ could return, and, and there was just, I don't know, there was just um, a lot of emphasis on the return of Jesus Christ. Well, it's been a while since then, and, uh, and uh, Jesus hasn't returned. But the, un- the understanding is that we just haven't, he, all, the, the, all the requirements, as uh, many prophetic uh, teachers, those who study prophecy, that's what I mean by prophetic, those who study prophecy, they do believe that, and they, they believe that everything that um, declares that, G, that must be, that needs to be fulfilled before Christ's return is already done. So, um, see, so Jesus could return at, at any moment, at any time. And uh, the only reason that Christ delays is primarily because of his grace and mercy, so that some of those that are still lost uh, can be saved. So it is his mercy that uh, at this moment we feel is, as it were, holding, I don't want to say holding him back, but uh, delaying um, the return. But uh, G- only, you know, Jesus is, is said the only one who knows the, the return is the God the Father. And um, there was, I don't know, maybe you remember this, um, in... Uh, there was a booklet in 1988 that says 88 reasons why the rapture will be in 1988. <laughs> so, you know, there was that one. And then there was uh, uh, another guy. His, his name was, I, I, rem- I know, I know his name. His name was Harold Camping. And um, he, he, was, he predicted the, that he knew through uh, calculations and through um, all the things of uh, uh, the Bible, and he put them all together, that Jesus is going to return in July. He calculated July 2017 would be the, would be the time in which Jesus would return. Um, it said, uh, oh, I, oh, that was funny, funny. He, another author used scripture, history, and a calculator to produce a date for Christ's return. In small print at the back of the book, he stated that Jesus said no one would know the day or the hour of his return, but he didn't say anything about knowing the month of the year. (laughs) You know, so he came up with the month of the year, you know, and of course, uh, he had a large number of followers and stuff, and they sold everything and made contributions. There was billboards. You know, build big bolt, you know, the, on the roads, you know, Jesus returning, you know, July 2017. There was billboards and, you know, paid for that big push. And then whenever, of course, Jesus didn't return and these people had no more money. They had sold everything and sent it into him. And he said, well, I didn't really say that. <laughs> I didn't tell you to send your money. You know, it was, he, he was telling them they were basically foolish. Now, I don't know if it had anything to do with um, uh, God preventing him from continuing, but he had a stroke and couldn't continue to speak. <laughs> but he was constantly berating uh, the Holy Spirit and Pentecost, and you know, he just ripped on that continually. And then he had, he had, his, he had his own little, well, I don't want to say his own little doctrine. There was, what it's, I forget what the... They were, they leaned towards, and this is a big word, super, I knew this from a Presbyterian, superlapsarian predestinationism, which means is everything is predestined and you have no choice. That's it. And, you know, his, his calculation was that 
you know, if a baby died, okay, would that baby go to heaven? Well, his way of explaining that was, if God predestined that child as an adult to go to heaven, then it would go to heaven as a baby. But if he did not, if the child was predestined to go to hell when it was adult, that baby would go to hell. <laughs> That's how far he was off. I mean, he was really off base. Um, but, um, you know, and I, I, my argument uh, against those who were in that camp, I always said, well, then why do evangelism? Why tell anybody about Jesus Christ? So they have changed their doctrine somewhat. Now they do evangelism <laughs> to get those people who are predestined to be members of their church. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They, but they didn't do it for years. They had their own little group. It was a real, it was a really good group. I mean, really good people. It was a real heady group. You know, smart intellectualism. Is, and I, because I, um, I know some of the docs here at Wimber were members of that of that of the church and they didn't necessarily follow this Harold Camping's um, you know they he wasn't their guru but he he they did follow him and listen to him and they had that type of approach to um, predestination so um, so there was a lot of misguided attempts and and because there are misguided attempts, that the, the whole conclusion is that some people lose hope that Jesus will return. And you say Christ is coming back, and you know, they go, oh yeah, we heard that before. Well, it, the early church, they thought Jesus was going to return before they died. So um, it, it was you know, just uh, one of those Right, they, they wanted to know what's going to happen. That's when Paul wrote. They, the question was to Paul, uh, the people who have died uh, and Jesus hasn't returned, what happens to them? And Paul wrote, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. So that's where the theology of uh, that, you know, our body and soul separate and that our, everything that is life in us goes to heaven and the body stays, you know, here in, in the ground and, and stays there until Jesus returns when the trump of God shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise, um, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. So there is going to be this uh, rapture of the church where the body and the soul are reunited. The, the, the importance of a bodily resurrection is that when, when Adam and Eve uh, sinned in the garden, um, they died, phys they died spiritually and they died physically. So the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ is the restoration of what God intended from the very beginning. So that's why there is a bodily resurrection and um, it, we, it will take place. So um, the promise of Christ's coming, we find that in John um, chapter 14, verse one through three. It says, let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So the, the declaration of Jesus is that whenever people are, have died or dying, do not let your heart be troubled, okay? Don't be upset with, with death. Uh, believe in God, believe also in me. So Jesus is, you know, as we find in the book of uh, John, John begins with Jesus being divine. You know, the other gospels end up with him being divine. And John begins with the divinity. In the, in the beginning was God, and, you know, and the word was God, and, you know, uh, and, and so, I forget but anyhow, he talks about that God was in the beginning and Jesus is, is God. He starts off with that whole sequence of, of who God is at the beginning. So in this uh, scenario, um, this is uh, his declaration to his disciples that this is at the, the, last, uh, the last supper, the communion, we call it communion service. Now, 
But Jesus was telling them, don't, don't, let, you know, don't be afraid of all of this that's coming. <laughs> and, um, believe, you know, in my father's house are many mansions. Now, <laughs> I know um, one, uh, it's hard to under, understand this whole idea of mansions. We got this, um, we got this idea of, you know, we got a mansion on a hilltop. And so there's a big house on the hilltop. Well, if all of us have a mansion on a hilltop, there's a lot of hilltops. <laughs> it's nothing but hills and valleys. <laughs> you know, to go visit your neighbor, you got to go down in the valley to go up to the next hilltop. But um, the, the uh, one translation has it, in my father's house are many rooms. And um, one, I, I, we went over something Wednesday, Wednesday night, number, I don't know how long ago. And one guy had put it as an, a, a cube, you know, uh, that it's, um, what is it, 100 and, 124,000 miles or whatever, cube. And inside that cube is these rooms, you know. And I don't think there's hallways and elevators. You know, I <laughs> but it, it talks about it being a cube, and I don't remember the dimensions of it. But God has a place prepared for us, and uh, if, he, if he, he spoke, well, he did speak the world into existence, he can, he can speak heaven into existence. And that he has a place prepared for us is that uh, where he is there we would be also. So um, he's telling him, telling us that he has a place for us. Um, if it were not so, I would have told you. So Jesus is telling, affirming to his disciples that there is a place for them. And, and I'm telling you that I'm preparing it and I'm preparing it for each one of you. And, um, and if I go and prepare this place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So Christ receives us unto, unto himself. I, uh, when people die, um, many times they will see angels or loved ones or see Christ that comes for them, you know, just like they're dying and they see Jesus, you know. Um, so I don't know uh, if that's... For, you know, what this says, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Um, I often think of that when people say that, that Christ has come to receive them and, and receive them home into heaven. And um, he says that where I am, there you may be also. So there is that declaration that, and, and if we understand the, 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 uh, the context of who we are in Christ, that Christ is in us, that we are part of the body of Christ, and that the, the, the Spirit of God abides within us, right? So the Spirit to where we are going is the Spirit of who we already have. <laughs> I am in Christ now, and I am going to be in Christ in, in death. So I'm the transition between where I am to, where, to heaven to the other side is an easy transition because it is the Spirit of God that takes, he leads me from this, this life to the next life. And, um, you know, it's... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It is not the will of God that any should perish. So God's desire. So he, he has enough room for everyone. And uh, that's that's the goal. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're we're a great we're we are a grain of sand. Yeah. 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 Mm. 
Yeah. All that's there and he still knows the hair on our head. Or the lack thereof. <laughs> so, but it, it's, and, and then whenever, whenever it's all over in the book of Revelation, all of that goes away. Everything disappears like a flame. It all goes up in smoke. It's gone. Yeah. And he will begin again. <laughs> new heavens and a new earth. You know, so an eternity with Christ. Um, and the next scripture, we'll need to quit, uh, is in Acts 1, 1, uh, verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So, it, you know, he ascended into heaven, he's coming back. There's, there's you know, uh, no doubt about it. <laughs> he was alive and, and he, he, you know, he lived, he died, he rose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven. That was seen, it was written of, and the, and the angels declared that again to those who were standing there. This same Jesus that you, see, you saw going up, he's going to come back the same way. So, you know, when we see that in the book of Revelation and we talk about the return of Christ, you know, it's, it's all there. You know, how it's going to happen. For the Lord, I like the next verse, 1 Thessalonians. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then, which, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So it said, we shall meet the Lord in the air. So this is talking about the rapture of the church before the tribulation because at the end of the tribulation Christ comes back and he steps foot on Mount the Mount of Olives and he comes to the earth in this one he meets his loved ones in the air so but he's going to meet us in the air so amen watch that's what the next one watch therefore for you do not know the hour the Lord does come. Therefore be ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. So, and that's, that's a, an admonition uh, and a warning, you know. If Christ returns, you know, and you're in the wrong place or in the wrong state of, of who you are, um, get ready for a tribulation. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there was a guy had a, um, you know, again, this is just an individual's report that he says that God allowed him, for whatever reason, to go to hell and to experience the torment of hell. And his declaration was, it was a pa place of total darkness, and he was in a cell with his own personal demon that tormented him and beat him and whipped him and threw him around. And they hear these people screaming and everything, and you can't die. You can't, you can't stop the, the suffering. You can't stop the torment because it's never ending. And um, another person talks about how that, um, that all of the times in which Christ came to us and you know, we rejected his wooing, his calling of, of us to repentance, all of those things will be the playbacks in our head. <laughs> You know, of when we, and, and that we didn't need to be there. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's not a social club. 
you know, it's not a social club, it's, uh, it's an eternal torment. And uh, the, the eternal torment is that it will never end. No, <laughs> they could be right next door and you won't even know them. <laughs> you won't know they're there. Hey, Harry, is that you over there? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not going to want to know who's next door. <laughs> no. Well, if you, you see, we have concept of time. In eternity, we have no concept of time. I mean, we know that in a certain amount of time, the day, the hours, the minutes, they all pass. So we always, we always have time in mind. You know, day, months, hours, seconds, whatever, years. We have all of that in mind. But for eternity, there is no concept of minutes, hours, days. So, you know, a thousand years, you know, the scripture, a thousand years is as a day. So... Like, uh, okay, so a thousand years or is a day, it means that you don't even know when a thousand years have passed. <laughs> you know, so, and the rewards of heaven, you know, they're going to be glorious and um, we're going to be with Christ and the, the things that he has prepared for us, you know, uh, we don't even know. We don't, we, you know, it hasn't even been, you know, we couldn't even understand it. We, I mean, we were told what heaven is going to be like. We're going to walk on streets of gold. The, 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 the gates are going to be made out of pearls or these rubies or whatever. And, you know, it's, it's going to be all the things we count as precious we're going to walk on, you know. And there's just, it's going to be, you know, wonderful and beyond uh, comprehension. So great place. We want to be there. <laughs> We want to be there. Father, we thank you that you have given us your word and how that it applies to our hearts and minds, that we can receive you as our Savior, that we can live the life that you have called us to only by your grace and mercy. So, Lord, we thank you for your word and continue, O oh Lord, to lead and guide us. Um, may we be found faithful and, Lord, uh, ever depending upon you and your word and your grace and your mercy. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.